All right, so uh, here I just received my uh, BQ, BQ, uh, whatever it's called, uh, H2. So uh, yeah, that's a product I was pretty excited when I first saw that it, would, it was uh, releasing. Um, yeah, I found the Hemera design quite uh, interesting in that regard. But uh, yeah, the weight uh, and complement that uh, involve using a 17 uh, NEMA 17 stepper that wasn't quite uh, a compromise I was willing to give over uh, the Flex 3 drive the G5 that I currently uh, have on my rail core and so um, yeah using this uh, NEMA 14 was uh, quite interesting with this uh, design and um, yeah, so uh, I decided to uh, go ahead and uh, order one. And uh, yeah, meanwhile, while I was waiting for uh, delivery, I watched some uh, reviews. And uh, I thought it would be a great uh, opportunity now that I've just received it to uh, build up on it and give uh, a little bit of a uh, manufacturing engineering uh, view on it. And so yeah, here you have it uh, already uh, in pieces. That's the first thing I did. It was working pretty fine. Uh, nothing was binding. Uh, but yeah, I really wanted to take it out and uh, check how everything uh, fit together inside uh, as a mean of uh, yeah, checking by myself the reliability of the assembly. So what I'd like to do in this video is uh, yeah, just go over uh, all of the components, uh, give you a bit of my uh, experience uh, on it and uh, yeah, see if uh, you can find any of these useful for deciding whether you want to uh, get your own. And so uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get started with uh, the, yeah. the electronics. Uh, yeah, it comes with a wire for the stepper, it comes with uh, I believe uh, 40 watt um, heater cartridge, pretty standard thermistor, and it comes with a 24 uh, volt fan. Uh, I, I wasn't able to check whether it's a uh, uh, brass bushing or bearing assembly, but yeah, we'll find out eventually. So uh, yeah, the first thing that I wanted to point out is when I disassemble it the two main screws yeah that were holding the whole assembly together these were not quite uh, tight yeah, it was really easy to uh, remove them so uh, yeah that's one of the reasons I wanted to double check how everything is assembled to make sure that yeah things don't rattle over time as I use quite high accelerations uh, likewise the hot end the nozzle was uh, you know, pretty easy to disassemble cold yeah so that means that it was probably not uh, tightened um, yeah hot as you should do it so uh, yeah one of the first thing that's uh, very nice about uh, this design so of course all the parts are CNC uh, aluminum uh, CNC machined uh, they have this anodizing black anodized uh, treatment that is uh, not quite uh, durable it's a pretty thin uh, anodizing it's pretty easy to scratch uh, but yeah apart from that the part quality is uh, pretty decent you have this part here that has a bit of a ding from factory but yeah it's really just cosmetic at this point um, yeah but as I was saying one of the most interesting uh, feature of uh, this design and something that I was the most looking forward to is the filament path so you can see at the distance between the entry of the filament all the way to the nozzle is 40 millimeter that's pretty uh, that's pretty low that's uh, 
That's a really interesting feature uh, in my book, as I tend to print a lot of flexible filaments. And uh, yeah, having the least distance between the filament, uh, the nozzle and the extruder is uh, yeah, always a very appreciable feature uh, to allow the most control over uh, flexible filaments. Um, to give a, a, an order of uh, magnitude, the um, Mosquito uh, Magnum that I currently have on uh, on my rail car has about 55 millimeter of uh, filament path. I think if you remove uh, the the mosquito by itself, uh, must have a little less. Uh, but yeah, of course uh, you always need to stack up some material to get all the way from the top of the mosquito to the extruder wheel. So uh, yeah, on paper that's uh, already a pretty nice uh, starting point. Um, something else I wanted to point out, yes, so the gears, uh, they are indeed metal, they are machined metal, they are not uh, sintered as uh, you would expect for something, you know, most of the gears nowadays. Uh, but it is mild steel, it's pretty mild steel. Here you can see I uh, actually file it a bit to uh, check the hardness and it is not hardness at all, hardened uh, at all. This is uh, yeah, probably blued, you know, just a chemical uh, bluing process that's been applied to it. So it's, uh, it's a pretty mild, mild uh, metal in that regard. It came also pretty uh, pretty dry right so no uh, lubrication whatsoever on the on the gears which kind of makes sense yeah because this wheel is actually popping out of the housing so you may um, advance the filament manually but yeah probably going to uh, put some uh, uh, PTFE grease in it um, yeah, and, uh, something else that I'm not really too happy about is uh, the bearings. Uh, the uh, machining, yeah. <laughs> Hard to uh, aim at the hole uh, through the camera. But yeah, the, the assembly is actually, uh, yeah, the bearings are assembled in the housing with a bit of clearance. Uh, so yeah, that's not as good as it could be. Usually bearings like to be assembled tight or uh, yeah, at least uh, sliding assembly. So this means that uh, yeah, the, the centering is not as uh, good as it could be and eventually it may uh, cause problems later on. Uh, same happens on the axles. It's really not very well uh, held in place. As a matter of fact, yeah, there is a little bit of slop in it. But again, we'll find out how this plays in the long term. Um, yeah, the gears, they are this sort of yeah, Bontek style that uh, do grip on both sides. Seems to be some stainless steel or nickel plated uh, brass maybe I wasn't able to uh, I can't really uh, f figure it out whether it's one of or the other it is uh, not magnetic for sure um, yeah I, I've uh, seen some reviews about the wheel here being uh, loose on the axle and yeah this wasn't the case uh, with mine so it was pretty uh, pretty tight on there so they probably fixed this uh, something I wanted to mention as well this is a yeah this unit I just received it now so we are the 26th of uh, uh, February and so uh, yeah I ordered mine during Chinese uh, New Year so it was one of uh, 
the first one to uh, come out of the factory after that. So that means after all the reviews unit were shipped as well. So I guess uh, they may have uh, yeah, made some uh, fixes in that regard. Uh, yeah, and one uh, of the last thing I wanted to mention, uh, this is to build up on uh, design prototype tests uh, observation. So yeah, the axle that holds the lever gear, the gear on the lever, is indeed uh, yeah, single sided. Uh, how do you say? It's not a uh, through hole. So uh, my unfortunately the axle was actually popping out by just a couple of millimeters so I was able to put it out because I wanted to check whether uh, this gear here was on bearings on a brass bushing or else and uh, yeah I was pretty pleasantly surprised to uh, see a needle bearing so uh, yeah, that's a, it's a pretty good uh, thing to find in uh, in this part. So that's a good uh, point for reliability. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's about it. So um, most most of the the points I wanted to uh, point out is a point out those point out is if you get one of those, uh, yeah, I would uh, at least recommend you to. Yeah, check all the screws. Um, if you're getting one of those later units, you may not have this uh, loose uh, gear uh, issues, but uh, yeah, at least make sure that your housing uh, bolts, yeah, these two are well uh, tightened. And uh, likewise with your uh, nozzle. Yeah, so make double sure that uh, you tighten it once it's hot and uh, yeah uh, while we are at it something else that I was pleasantly surprised is uh, that they included wrenches right so uh, wrenches to uh, yeah allow you to grip the heat block and a smaller one for the nozzle yeah that's pretty neat I actually never had one of those so <laughs> kudos uh, BQ for that and uh, yeah one last thing now that I wanted to uh, bring up I've seen uh, accounts of the Teflon lining uh, being cut too short and this wasn't the case for me it seems to be pretty well dimensioned I did order with it uh, stainless steel full metal nozzle so uh, yeah, just in case I'd like to uh, print some uh, hotter uh, materials but yeah for now I think that I'll leave this one on uh, I'm looking mostly at this guy to print flexible and I believe that uh, from all these features so mainly the short filament path the double uh, hubbed uh, gear and uh, the Teflon lined throat. Uh, yeah, I think that this is uh, something that should be performing really well uh, with flexible filaments. So, uh, yeah, I hope that you found this uh, little video uh, insightful and. Uh, yeah, if you have any uh, other questions, just uh, reach out and uh, yeah, have a good one. Happy printing!